What is an EXO? I'll answer that. This is the first LEGO Beyblade I have ever reviewed. Kind of. Okay, yeah, this thing went through a lot of different changes in its heyday. One of the first original versions of this bay looked like this. That's an attack type. And then there was the 2.0 revision that was a little bit more aggressive, but it was kind of still just like... Square. This one takes the aggression of Mold 2 and the silhouette of Mold 1 and turns it into this beautiful design. And it's also in the sparkling system now. I think that'll get me more views too. Yes, yeah, so over the past couple months, I have been converting every single turn system Beyblade into a sparking system Beyblade, or as I might now dub it, Cyber Sparks. Shout out to this Discord user for giving me that name idea. It's right there. Bam. All right, go bam. Yeah, go and spam their DMs. I don't care. <laughs> don't do that. But um, yeah, this is a pretty cool bay. Um, very nice design, I'd say, especially when compared to the prior ones. And uh, let's just get right into it. Let's waste no more time and finally look at the beginning of a beginning. I can't think of anything cool to say here. The system itself is separated into four main components that are pretty common when it comes to LEGO Beyblade. We have the turn ship, which this determines um, the spin direction and also sometimes weight distribution. We have the blade, which is your main point of contact, of course. The chassis, which is a secondary layer and it adds a little bit more heft and sometimes there's maybe a gimmick on there or something. And then the tip, which determines the Beyblade's performance and sometimes the height. So with that all out of the way, let's look at each of these parts one by one. Let's of course start off with the turn chip, or just the chip if you're like busy or something. So since these things don't affect performance too much, there isn't a whole lot to say about it besides the color scheme, which is pretty good. And then like the weight distribution on this is fine. These little corners right here are missing some stuff, but either way, it's still fine to use for, I guess, basically anything. The cyber blade though is definitely the star of the show as it's, once again, vastly different from the prior versions, but still similar enough for it to be considered the same part. Um, and this thing used to be terrible, but now it's actually pretty good. It's kind of an oval shape, which oval shapes, very good at attack. And what I mean by oval shapes is that two main points are prioritized over basically everything else. So it's gonna have a lot of good attack potential. So yeah, finally, this thing is actually good. Let's see if the next part is good. Nope. Alright, so 1A, it's not a bad part. It's okay. When it came out, it was the best because, like, what other chassis do we have? We had 1B, that thing was trash. We had 3D, which, I mean, it was okay, but not really for attack. And then there was 1S, which was... Bleh. And then, like, 1A Dash came out after a couple months, and then that was the best. So this thing was good for a while. But then it just slowly started to fall off, and now there isn't a whole lot of use for this thing. Now, for those very observant viewers, you've probably noticed that this thing's shape isn't quite like the original one, which has these rounder bits as opposed to these kind of squared off bits. Now, that was actually a mistake. They just didn't have these in white when I ordered the parts for some reason. It's a whole thing. I'll probably get them sometime later. But for now, we're going to deal with this, which is close enough, and honestly, it matches the kind of geometry of the original, um, or of the blade pretty well, so not too big of a deal, really. Finally, we have the driver, or the tip, which is what I want to call it, because Metal Flight. And this is Excel, although most of you probably disagree. Originally, this was Zephyr, because it's a whole flat similar to the actual Zephyr driver, but now it's Excel, because the original Excel driver sucked. It just wasn't very aggressive at all, and it just, it was just terrible. So now this is Excel and I know you're thinking, oh, what about Reaper's uh, Zephyr driver? What are you doing about that? We'll get to that when we get to that. Let's focus on this for now. And this is now called Excel. And by the way, it's good. So to put these parts together is pretty easy. You take the chip, you place it into the base, you place that onto the chassis, and you put the driver on there. And here is Cyber Exo 1A Excel. So yeah, we have that. So let's just get into weighing the parts now. All right, we have our scale up here. Just note that it's not exact. So it rounds to the nearest gram, which is really annoying. So I'm pretty sure this isn't four grams. It's probably a little bit less, but it is about four grams, the EXO turn chip. For the Cyber Blade, it is 13 grams, which is really good. So all together, we have the full layer here, which weighs a whopping 16 grams. That 
is really good weight for something of this size. Uh, then we have the chassis, which is 12, which is like fairly average, a little bit above average. And then we have the driver, which, you know, it's really light, so we don't really have to care about that. But altogether, this Beyblade weighs a total of around 31 grams. Damn. Yeah, this thing is kind of a beast in terms of weight, which it definitely surprised me when I weighed this guy for the first time. But is it a beast in battle? Let's find out. Let's of course, start off with a test launch. And compared to the original, like, it actually has decently aggressive movements, which is good for an attacker. And, and sorry for the very, like, kind of like weird lighting. I mean, I I tried, but my ring light is freaking massive and it likes to fall over. It's great. I feel like it's fitting to put the first turn system attacker against the first sparking attacker, so we have our first matchup against Hunter Hyperion. Oh, and Exo gets a burst. All right, first win for Exo and just in general too. Yeah, I'm- <laughs> I guess Hyperion just sucks against this thing. I mean, it's like four grams heavier, so it kind of makes sense. So it's pretty clear that this thing is already showing to be pretty good. So let's kill it right now. The absolute tank dragon. This is good. Oh! This is good. Okay! Wow, alright. Looks like Exo can, uh... Kinda? It, it, I mean, I'll call that a tie, because they kinda hit the pockets, but... Dragon Burst in the pocket. This time, and Exo just dies. I wouldn't expect anything less. Alright, let's go Exo, come on. Beat him up. That's not what I said. So let's do another really fair match. Actually, to be fair, these things weigh like near the same, so it actually might not be too unbalanced. All right, let's see. New versus old. That piece just broke off. And extreme wins, who would have guessed? It's kind of a weak launch, but maybe it'll win now. No. Oh, another piece broke off. Fine. It's not fine. All right, so that's it for Cyber Exo 1A XL. Uh, those matchups might've been a little bit unfair because I put it up against Hyperion and then two like tanks. But either way, I think this thing is definitely better than Hyperion, which is um, a really good thing because Hyperion was like pretty good for so long. But now we have something that outclasses it, which is nice. So yeah, there we have that. So if you enjoyed this video, comment, like, subscribe stuff like that, and I'll see you in the next video.